getting cold in Sweden. I've just spent several hours trying to clean up my wife's car. Yes, I need to tell you guys, she drives a BMW. And as everybody knows, you have the Audi A6, you have the BMW 5 Series, the E-Class, and the Volkswagen Passat. You know, that's the cars, the German cars with no gender. Welcome to another room where I sit on a huge ball and bounce around. The reason for that is that I get a much better seating position when I sit on this. Well, I will twist around a bit, but it strengthens up my back and it's something that I like. Today, I'm going to get inspired by your comments. Many of you have been asking about my yellow watch. And it's nothing fancy, it's just a regular Porsche design, flat six automatic. Let's see if we can get that in focus. There we go. Um, but I think it looks astonishing. It is a beautiful watch and it's a chronograph. But I do have a problem with it. It doesn't track time. I bought it over in United States through eBay and I don't have the time or getting into the voyage of having the warranty valid. In fact, I think that's going to take me forever sending uh, the, the watch over to the States, I believe. Anyway, rubbish inside, beautiful design. Anyway, Porsche actually gave me a new watch a couple of months ago, a Sport Chrono watch. I'm not sure if you have seen that on my, in my videos. I think I had it when I drove the Cayman S. Anyway, here is it. Uh, it is um, inspired by the 991 Turbo S exclusive series. Remember, I think that was the case that each person that bought an uh, exclusive series also received an exclusive watch. And uh, the design of that watch ended up in the uh, Porsche design collection or driver selection, I think it is called. Um, it's just a plain battery watch, 42 millimeters, 190 gram, but um, I really like it. The clockwork movement is Swiss-made Ronda 5040D, the 13 jewel version with gold platinum finish, the same caliber as the Torchheuer F1 chronograph, type quartz claiming 54 months battery life and waterproof up to 10 meters. Three-part stainless steel case with PVD coating in black and side inlays in carbon. Bezel with PVD coating in gold. Dial made of carbon. Single-sided anti-reflective sapphire crystal with anti-reflective coating. The details in the design are astonishing. You need to pay attention and look deeper to discover more details like the Porsche shield at the crown or the Porsche Tech's beginning of the black metal strap. And if you follow me on Instagram, yes, you can find me on Instagram from a couple of weeks back and also on Twitter. And I took a drive with my GT3 and collected a beautiful watch from Tok Heuer. Um, Aqua Racer, a chronograph, and uh, it feels so nice to be able to try out different uh, watches. So, um, my first impression on this watch is that it is solid, it's beautiful, and I've already received comments on it. People actually asking me, What kind of watch do you wear? and that has never happened before. And speaking on my GT3. It was so nice to, to drive it again. It has been at Porsche Center Stockholm for uh, some weeks and, and I thought I needed to take a spin. And so I did. And many of you have actually commented and have, um, let's say, asking me not to sell it. 
And to be honest, I am not 100% comfortable with myself selling the car. And just to clarify everything, I'm selling the car because there are new releases, new models introducing in 2019 that I'm kind of interested in. We have the GT4, we have the new Spider that most likely are going to be introduced at the same time. And we have the Speedster and we have the, yes, we have one more car. Yes, everybody speculated in the 992 that will replace the beautiful 991. But I am actually following the rumors of the 718T much more carefully. It says that it's going to be between this car, the Cayman S and the GTS. And just imagine if we get the exact attributes from the Carrera T into the Cayman with rear axle steering, PTV, lighter windows, 918 bucket seats. Ooh, ladies and gentlemen, be careful because that could be the proper driver's man, driver's woman car of the century. Yes, there are so many great releases from Porsche next year. And that makes me wonder if I would like to change my GT3 to one of the new cars. But it's not an easy task, because I still believe that my GT3, the 4-liter natural aspirated engine with a manual gearbox, is the last one from Porsche. Yes, we have seen the 992 GT3 on different tracks and we can clearly hear that it is a natural aspirated engine. But remember, please, that the demands from on or, or, or the pressure or the pressure on the car manufacturer has never ever been larger. If they will have a natural aspirated engine, they will have so strong particulate filter to cope with the demands that I feel that it is ridiculous. I mean, they are trying to do a first aid operation on something that are already dead. And I think we need to accept the fact that the natural aspirated engine are dead. <sighs> And that makes my decision even more harder or difficult. What to do? I mean, the spectacular 718 that has been, been introduced to me this year and have that as a GT4, wow. And then we have the roof off with the Spider. And then obviously we'll have the most attractive car, the, the Speedster that I most likely will not get an allocation for, but it's still, it's amazing. I mean, a GT3 without the roof, that could be something. And also the 992, but to be honest, I'm not that attracted to the 992 at this point. I think they will, kind of tuning the design, what I've seen on pictures, I think it looks very nice. It will obviously get heavier, it will be actually not wider according to what I hear, but it will be higher, the weight goes up, not satisfied that they will not introduce the hybrid from the beginning, adding more weight obviously. So that leaves me to the um, Cayman T or will it be a Boxster T? I have no idea, but there are so many great cars. And from that perspective, that's why I'm taking a chance here. So if nobody will buy the GT3, great. I will have the best car that the world can produce. But Janko, if I have the best car in the world, according to myself, why do I sell it? And to answer that question, I need to show you or tell the story of my friend Johan. This is his club sport. Well, if you don't follow me, it's a Carrera T. 
And I was with him the entire journey from when he specified the car according to how he was going to use it until he took delivery. And I think that's the missing link between Snow White and me. And if I had the opportunity to specify my GT3 myself, would I then put her for sale? And the answer are quite simple. Not a chance in a million. Thank you.